I'm Andrew Sherman. I'm a Texas transplant who has always been in pursuit of art as a career. I've played in bands, pursued an acting career in Hollywood, but I found it behind the lens of a camera here in Dallas, Texas. I was born in New York, I've lived in Chicago, Los Angeles, Austin, but I love Dallas. There's a magical artistic scene in Dallas that mostly goes unnoticed to the outside world. This podcast is focused on what makes it so special and the people who make it thrive artistically. If you don't live here, and even if you do, you might not have heard of them. This is the Dallas Famous Podcast. So who you gonna be? Who you gonna be when you all grown up? Who you gonna be? Who you gonna be when you all for us? Yeah. This week on the Dallas Famous Podcast, we have visual artist and painter Chase Fleischman. Chase was doodling his whole life, just like a lot of us. Then one day, he answered an open call ad for artists at Deep Elm Art Company. Suddenly, Fleischman is painting a full wall mural, and Chase the Artist was born. Well known around Deep Elm for his robot paintings, Chase's style has flourished and has continued to grow. He's working on a graphic novel and has even done the album artwork for Try More Mojo albums. Chase talks about his process and the role music plays in it, and a whole bunch more. So sit back and enjoy my chat with Chase Fleischman. We are here. This week on the Dallas Famous Podcast, we've got Chase Fleischman, artist, illustrator, um, somebody that people know in Dallas. That's why he's here. <laughs> Happy um, to be here. Yeah. Are you from Dallas originally? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've lived here my whole life. We are here this week on the Dallas Famous Podcast. We've got Chase Fleischman, artist, illustrator, um, somebody that people know in Dallas. That's why he's here. <laughs> Happy um, to be here. Yeah. Are you from Dallas originally? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've lived here my whole life. What part of town were you in? Uh, originally from Lake Highlands, and okay. then I kind of moved around uh, DFW. Like, I was in Addison for a while, and then uh, living out of uh, North Garland now. Okay. So, like, have you always been, like, a painter, artist? Like, ever, like when did it start for you? I've always been drawing, but as far as, like, painting goes, that didn't start until uh, Deep Ellum Art Company opened. Like, so basically, at, at that time... They had posted something on like, I think it was like a, uh, one of the Facebook art pages about like an art call. So <clears throat> I reached out to them and submitted my portfolio, but at the time it was just all drawings. Um, and then uh, I got in there and then maybe a few weeks or so later, uh, they hit me up asking me to paint a mural on the side of the building, uh -huh. which I thought was like a mistake at first <laughs> because I had no paintings at all. Um, wait, so, wait, you, you, you mean when you submitted, you had not even been painting yet? No. You've been doodling your whole life, I guess? Yeah, yeah. I, I've always been drawing, but yeah, like uh, paint was, was new. So I had to like teach myself to paint to do the mural that they commissioned me to do. Wow. So why not uh, learn something in a very public way that could be <laughs> very humiliating if it doesn't go well? <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, well, because I mean, I don't know. That is, first of all, murals to me are like just seem like they'd be difficult because yeah. of the perspective and, you know, like how big it is. But like you, I, I'm okay. I'm, I guess I never absorbed that fact that like that was your four way foray into painting. Yeah, okay. diving right into the deep end, pretty much. Wow. <laughs> what were you doing? I mean, you're a regular job, I guess. Like, the, the yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. This is still like a like a side hustle for okay. me. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just like googling how to paint murals and stuff like that <laughs> in YouTube videos and stuff. And, oh wow. Yeah. I mean, there was definitely like even like so that one I did basically just with you know uh, cans of paint and and brush. Um, definitely took away a lot of stuff from that and kind of like helped start you know working towards painting more and then when they asked me to do a second one to basically just cover up the first one and do a new one uh, that was my first time spray painting because I figured like the last one took way too long I think it'll be faster to do spray paint so I had to teach myself how to spray paint and what so <laughs> you're so basically your practice your sandbox is Artco's sidewall pretty much that's <laughs> <laughs> that's not a bad place to start yeah yeah how hard was it to do i mean i mean hard is a hard thing to ask like i mean because both these things sound impossible to me <laughs> but i mean the difference between spray painting a mural and painting a mural like how that's got to be super different i think moving forward i'll probably do a, a little bit of both like maybe like uh i think it'd be a, it'd be better for me to do more spray paint for like large blocks of color and then go in with a brush afterwards to the fine details because like like even with the, the the new mural or new ish mural that i did like with the spray paint, I learned after the fact that I used the wrong kind of can. Like I didn't know that there was a high pressure and a low pressure type of can. So mm -hmm. everything I was doing was high pressure. So I was like, what the hell? Like, why, why can't I get any like fine details? Oh, like, like it was too, yeah, you yeah, can pull back. It was just like blasting the wall. So I, I had to kind of like navigate around that. And so I was like cutting out different shapes of like cardboard to kind of like mitigate some of the, the 
like I guess the backsplash of paint and stuff like that. Uh -huh. But yeah, so I mean, definitely like uh, learned my lessons from that. So are you still doing anything with spray painting now? I mean, is it just a mural thing? That's the last time I did spray paint. Um, if I do another mural, then I'll I'll definitely uh, utilize spray paint again. Like I did another mural at um, uh, Dallas Hemp Company on Garland Road, uh -huh. um, but that one was just like on the indoor wall, and I just did that one fully with with brush. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think definitely if I were to do an exterior or like a, a large scale mural again, I would definitely uh, do like a combination. Like so, I can do the the brush for like the fine like you know line work and details and stuff like that but then for large blocks of color just knock it out with spray paint is there something you have to do when you're done for the outside paint paintings like to seal it there probably is and i didn't do it <laughs> <laughs> well that's been up for a while it doesn't yeah. look any, any dollars so whatever you did on that one worked. so yeah so we originally met at art co probably when it first opened yeah like, i mean you were hanging out there because you because you did the, the mural so you like kind of knew about it that way yeah um that was a fun scene for a while there we we're just all hanging out all the time yeah. Um, but I, I, it's still sort of breaking my brain because I know you basically as a as an artist. I mean, I have one of your earlier works, uh, and it's funny. I remember, it, like, because you're a really good salesman. Because uh, <laughs> a couple of times you have like sold me stuff, which I don't regret any of it. But um, on that one, I remember seeing it. It premiered, premiered in the art gallery on the wall, and I had my eye on it right away. And it was just too much for where I was at, and then. I don't cut to like six months later, like a lot of times if something doesn't sell, like, you know, artists will be selling it in the yard and, and you were there and I was like, oh, I was looking at that one and, and I don't remember how much I paid, but you, I, I walked out with it and I right. was not planning, <laughs> but it's still on the wall. I like it. Nice. And like that, that seems like it was your early robot stuff, right? Yeah. How did you start with the robots? Like what got that going? I mean, I've always been more inclined to do like sci-fi kind of work. Like even back in high school, like uh, I did like, you know, the AP art drawing classes and stuff like that and i remember my portfolio senior year was basically just like all uh like kind of sci-fi related stuff and because I, I never really liked looking at stuff and drawing it like there was there's artists that i know that like they do that like that's their thing they can mm -hmm. do portraits or whatever like i just always preferred kind of making up my own stuff and just going from the imagination and so that's what i did with pretty much from the jump and just kind of like <clears throat> learning from there like i just i don't like doing like still life or like especially like if i do it my own thing i it doesn't really like if there's any mistakes or anything like that you'll never know because <laughs> it's like it's my own thing it's, it would be it'd be if i was to be like doing a portrait of somebody it'd be very clear to see if like oh that eye is a little bit too big or it's, the placement's off or whatever but right if I, if I make up my own stuff then i can do whatever i want i mean but you do people too i mean it's like in your in your original creative art so yeah. how again robots where did that come from <clears throat> it's i mean honestly like I think it's just also because it, it sells better, so I, I'm more inclined to do that. I mean, I get it. Like, it's Deep Elm and the robot, but, like, I mean, it's just, it's just the sci-fi thing. I mean, did you yeah. see that, that guy down there one time, that robot, and just decided I'm going to paint it? Or? I mean, I've been doing that from, like, from the from the jump, like, f ever since I was, you know, just drawing. Like, it's always oh. been more of the sci-fi stuff. Like, okay. I think my earlier works, like, if I look back at my portfolio when it was just all drawings, it was actually, like, darker stuff than I do now. Uh-huh. Um, because it's also like, you know, some of the works that I did back then, it was kind of more just doing it to do it and not really doing it in, in hopes of, you know, someone purchasing it and throwing it on their wall or something like that. Right. I was going to ask you about that. I mean, <clears throat> because like, obviously all of it is coming from your brain if it's on a commission, Yeah. but yeah, you've, you've had to adapt or you've learned to adapt a little bit for more marketability. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <clears throat> Arco as well. I mean, the, like the way that they're set up, like most of the work that gets sold there will be from people going to see bands as opposed to like going there specifically for the art. So it's kind of more like what can you do that'll like catch people's attention or like draw their eye or something like, you know, mm -hmm. while they're waiting in between sets or something like that. I think Artco does a really good job with how they have the, the wall like animated with the, the lighting and stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. they do that in between songs. So like whatever you can do to kind of make it stand out. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. It's great. I mean, and for me, like I, that gave me an opportunity to put, art on the wall I mean photos but art on the yeah. wall and uh for those that don't know we have a cool collaboration that we did that i've sold yeah. many times uh i i guess it's called hitcher deep i don't even remember i've named it like 10 times because i don't <laughs> know how to do art like, like, like hitchhiking robot or yeah hitch robot or something yeah like that. something like that i feel like i've changed like i forget and then i'll come up with other names and then i'll <laughs> find an old file i'm like i already named that before um so I mean, okay, so you, you're, you're doing a lot of stuff. So you started with s sketching and then you're doing painting at Artco. And I mean, I've really seen your style develop. I've seen these robots like come to life and I've seen them in all different scenarios. And um, 
uh, it's interesting too. Like, I mean, sometimes I look at them, I'm like, that is so cool. Would I hang that on my wall? And then you sell a lot of those. Yeah. Um, I mean, I probably, maybe you can't, but like, how do you come Like you've done some really cool, like you've taken this robot theme and you've had some, you know, I, like during COVID there was like some police, like, like riot uh, robot. I mean, yeah. like, I mean, where are these ideas coming from like just your subconscious from the news? Like, are you doing some conscious like insertion of that? It's kind of a mixture. Like the one that you're talking about. Uh, yeah. It's a painting of a, a robot in riot gear covered in flames. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. It's like a black and white, like grayscale piece. Yeah, uh, it sticks in my head. <laughs> that one actually um, is from a scene. So I'm also, um, even though it's taken a million years, I'm also working on a, my own graphic novel. Okay. So that's actually a scene from the book. So sometimes I can pull stuff from the book. Oh, on, on I knew canvas. that you, I was going to ask you about the graphic novel, but I didn't realize that's really cool how you can do that. Like your art like gives you different like paths from, yeah. from it. What's the name of the novel? I call it Prop 10, The Robots Saga. Okay. It's pretty much uh, like Prop 10 is like, you know, one zero binary on off. It's pretty much just, uh, I came up with that one kind of when Trump, you know, rose in popularity or whatever and he was also doing his like rhetoric about like you know uh, anti-immigration stuff anti-muslim all that kind of you know bullshit that he was doing so i came up with an idea for a story to kind of make it more like uh if if robots were in society and one day they decided to like you know basically turn them off and say no more robots like what that would look like mm-hmm. so i mean it's, it's something that i've it's it's written all the the storyboarding is done it's just a matter of like actually taking the time to kind of transition from paint to comic like it's it's hard mm-hmm. for me to kind of stay away from that like cuz even now like my my office is fully set up for painting like the the canvas and easel and all that stuff is everywhere like for me to transition back over to the comic I'd have to kind of like you know shelf all that and then change the workstation for the drawing table and huh. all that stuff so it's Wait what medium are you doing the comic in the markers or I'm doing a uh I'm I'm doing that one kind of old school so I'm doing with a uh, pencil and pen and then just basically scanning the pages in a uh, uh, digitally coloring it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's old school. Okay. I think yeah. I think a lot of people now they'll do it like even just like in like Procreate or something like that, like just drawing oh, directly from thing. like a graphics tablet. Like gotcha. To me, like some of that stuff just looks almost like too clean. Like yeah. I kind of like having some of the imperfections and stuff like that. So yeah. I mean, I, that that's an interesting side thing. Is AI helping in any of this process for you? I haven't used AI now, but I, I'd actually be in, inclined to like, to see what what AI would do if I were to like try to get it like. Uh, I know, like, um, I think Mid Journey is one of the softwares that I've been looking into a little bit, but um, I don't, I also just don't care enough really to, yeah. to go too much into AI. But. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, like, as a photographer, like, Lightroom is what I edited and they added a denoise uh, function. So mm. I've just be able, I've been able to reclaim, like, all these dark photos. And when I shoot at night now, I, they're dark. I just, I, so it's like I'm not like going to a separate thing, right. but it's, I was just curious if it, if it ended up. I think Photoshop this. even has some AI stuff built in now. They do too. Yeah. They, yeah. It's probably way better. I, I just never got into Photoshop for some reason. Right. And now I feel like when you can remove objects anywhere, it's like some <laughs> people spend a lot of time on that. Didn't need to. Yeah. Um, so also you, you know, talking about being modern, you, uh, you did some NFTs. Like how did that product, I've never been able to understand all that. <laughs> I, I never even like really thought I'd be doing that, but a friend of mine kind of reached out to me like, you should jump in on this. Like you can make so much money. You know, like, so I, I looked right. into it a little bit. I, I set up a few, but it's just also like, <clears throat> I mean, I think I'd sold one and I think I paid more in what's called gas fees than I actually made off the sale. Oh, jeez. So, I mean, it, it was more just like to do it just for the experience, but I didn't really like keep up. I mean, they're still out there. Like, but right. It's, I just think it was a thing that just came and went, and like there was, I saw some story. Some some guy made like millions of dollars in one time, and I, yeah. I'm like, you're the only guy. Yeah. Who did. And then now I'm, I'm pretty sure those anything that sold for millions, if you were to like look at the worth of it now, it'll probably be like, oh, it's worth fifteen dollars. Yeah. Something. Well, if he cashed out, he got his money. Yeah. I yeah. guess. Okay, so you do a lot of stuff, uh, just for fun. Um, well, here's some maybe technical questions. Like how how long does it take to do like a, a painting that you put on the gallery? Like a you know regular size canvas for you uh, it kind of depends on what i'm painting uh, the the way my style is now it takes a bit longer like the the piece that you have where i i did a lot more um like i think my early painting style was a lot more illustrative uh, kind of like more from the drawing background so i did a lot more like uh, you know like uh, black paint line work and stuff like that like just kind of like actually almost like drawing with paint but now i do a little bit more like actually like paint painting like you mm-hmm. know, doing a lot more like gradients and shades and stuff like that so 
it definitely takes longer now to do it um, just because like, you know, if I'm going to do like multi-layered pieces, I have to wait for the first one to, to dry first and, and then like touch it up. Um, I'd say depending on the size and like complexity, like maybe like six to eight hours, something like that. Oh, that's take. not that long. Yeah. That's pretty fast. And how, how many pieces do you think you do a month if you not like, not if you have a show or something, just an average month, just uh, I haven't been doing nearly as many now just because baby in the house. Oh, yeah. So it's Congratulations on that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, but before I, I used to do, I'd probably say maybe like two, three, maybe maybe upwards of four, depending on the size. Like, okay. You ever, I mean, are you getting rid of most of it? I mean, you have a big collection at home. I haven't done any shows. Um, so the last show that I did was actually at Artco. Uh, I curated one at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. um, that was the last uh, showing that I've done. I uh, typically will either show at uh, Artco or Kettle if there's uh, space, mm -hmm. both in Deep Ellum. Um, but yeah, I haven't really like signed on to any other shows or anything like that. I kind of like front loaded all my stuff for the year just because I knew Baby was on the way. So sure, I makes sense. Anything else. Yeah. yeah, and also I see I own the shirt you're wearing, which is <laughs> Deep Ellum with your one of your robots on it. How did Sh that happen? Uh, shameless self promotion here. Yeah, uh, I actually was contacted on Instagram by. Uh, Lewin from Lewin, uh, is it Lewin's Print Shop or Lewin's? It's like a they do T-shirts and stuff in Deep Ellum. I, okay. uh, I can't remember if it's called the Print Shop or whatever it is, but it's it's uh, Lewin's shop. Uh, basically, just reached out to me to see if I would do a design, and they were gonna uh, do a run of shirts. I think it was just like uh, one batch of like thirty shirts or something like that. Mm. Uh, did that, and then they were selling those at the uh, like those outdoor markets in Deep Ellum for a while. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if they're still selling them anywhere in Deep Ellum or not, but yeah, that's that's how that one came to life. Okay. Yeah, I mean, is there any other cool things that your arts ended up in that you wouldn't have expected? Uh, I don't think, um, unless I'm blanking, I don't think there's anything else really. I mean, I, getting the murals on the wall and then the t-shirt thing was pretty cool. I don't, I'm trying to think if I've done anything else recently. Uh, I mean, I have stuff, like, I've been commissioned to do pieces that are, like, you know, in uh, people's businesses and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But as far as, like, uh, anything else like that goes, I think that's pretty much it. How does that happen? Does people just know your work and they just hit you up? Yeah. Like, I've, I've been contacted by people that, like, maybe they saw a band playing at Artco and then they, they saw my stuff on the wall and then, and then found me. And, like, maybe they uh, liked the style but either didn't, you know, purchase the, the piece that they saw but they wanted something similar or mm -hmm. stuff like that. I've <clears throat> that's, that's funny because I had seen a lot of your pieces and, like I said, like, I'm like, I don't mind hanging on the wall. And they're like, well, what would I hang on the wall? And then that led to you doing a commission piece. That's not a robot. It's just a blonde girl in a yeah. field of flowers. But what's really cool about that is I was single for a long time. And now I'm like very much in love with uh, my girlfriend, Amy. And it's like you painted her. It's like her in the picture. It's so yeah. weird how that stuff works. I don't know. Maybe you don't think it's weird. I think it's weird. No, I think it's cool. <laughs> what does she think about it? She loves it. I mean, but, uh, you know. Uh, it's just one of those like weird uh, things it was so, meant to be it was meant to be exactly <laughs> yeah i mean i try not to do just robots even though that's kind of like the bread and butter of what i do i don't want to be just like a single tier kind of artist mm -hmm. you know like I, I do try to like venture out and do a little bit more like surrealism every once in a while i'll do something that's a bit more abstract and just paint like you know like random shapes and stuff like that but mm -hmm. for the most part uh I, I always go back to the well and just do the robot work does that get received less uh as, than the robot stuff it's hit or miss i mean yeah. uh the abstract stuff i've done largely has sold um because you know again like with a lot of my work even like the robot stuff sometimes it even though it's not as dark as like some of my older like drawings it's still like you know maybe not something to put in the dining room kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. like, so. <laughs> right, so, right. So with the abstract stuff, you don't have to really worry about that. It's like just if the color scheme works and you like the, the shapes and the overall composition, you know, you can put it kind of anywhere in the house. Yes. Yeah. You know, like one of my recent pieces is a robot basically shot full of arrows, like just sitting <laughs> on a farm. Like, I don't think that'll be as, you know, we'll see, we'll see how, how that one uh, is received whenever I get that one on a wall somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know Artco was uh, sort of a conduit for artists. Are, are you at all like in touch with artists? Do you like, you know, um, is there a camaraderie that you're a part of at all? In this yeah, team? I mean, it's definitely shifted. Uh, some of the artists that like, you know, that I used to work with, uh, you know, kind of moved on and, and uh, like uh, Sarah Curl Larson. Yeah, uh, she's one that uh, I worked with a lot. Uh, I keep in contact with her. I think she moved to Michigan now, though. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Alfonso. Yeah. Uh, He's moved to Florida now. I think he might be coming back. But so it's some of the original artists that I worked with. They've kind of gone on and done other things. But um, for the most part, I do try to keep in contact 
uh, when available, like a uh, Andy so Byers. What I've started doing with Artco is the the last two times I've showed there, it was actually uh, me curating the show, so I got to pick the artist that I wanted involved with it. So I've kind of uh, tried to open the door for some artists. Like uh, there was um, Amy Byers is one that uh, her work is great. She does like these really like you know it's like serene landscape pieces that are like just like really beautifully painted. Uh, she had never shown at Artco before, and so I got her in. Uh, just like basically, just <clears throat> we saw each other on Instagram, became friends, and like liked each other's work, and then kind of from there, I just asked her if she wanted to, you know, be in a show, and we got we got that going, and uh, I think she sold like more than any other artist <laughs> in the show. She was, like wow, so uh, it's it's definitely like a, a. I'll try to bring in people where I can, like especially like if if I like them and their work then i definitely want to try to help as much as i can that's cool yeah because it's hard to get a, a first chance at a gallery and i remember the first time i got the phone call that i'd sold a piece it was like mm. i mean the money wasn't even a factor it was just so cool yeah yeah you know i'm officially the first sale at artco ever oh nice that's a good footnote <laughs> yeah. i like that they had me uh, like sign a dollar bill and i think i drew a robot or something stupid <laughs> <laughs> that's cool i'm actually supposed to curate the six-year anniversary art show nice and it's going to be a bunch of photographers so i'll be talking about that That'd way cool. too much later on at some point <laughs> um do you have any um artists uh, that you really like that influence you or that you draw some kind of inspiration from maybe not directly but in- indirectly uh Honestly, I think I'm more influenced just from like listening to music than than art. Like, okay. I, I try to I try to do my own thing when it comes to art. Like so, even though like uh, like I've learned, you know, you'll never be like the best at anything because there really is no best. But uh, I I just try to make it as much and uh, unique in like my style as possible to where like uh, if someone sees it, they can tell that it was painted by me. I mm-hmm. think that's really cool. Whenever it's something that's you know got Definitely that distinctive got that. style, yeah. yeah. But, but like is so okay so is there certain bands that like help you with certain types of art or is it just kind of whatever's it's it? honestly so random like it, it might even be like a you know an original soundtrack to a movie or something like a certain song that i'll listen to on repeat or uh-huh. it might be uh you know a particular a particular band or something like that i'll just be listening to the album over and over and i'll come up with ideas like so like what i'll typically do for pieces is if i find a certain song or you know like album or something that feels kind of like like I'm getting an uh, inspiration or something from it. Like I'll probably just, I'll put it on like repeat until the painting is done. Huh. So I'm just listen to the same thing over and over That's again. That's interesting. Like, can you give us an example of something recently? Uh, I've definitely done some with like Muse or uh, Mars Volta albums, uh-huh. stuff like that. Um, uh, I'm trying to think what else, like uh, I'll see like a, a lot of hip hop and stuff as well. Like uh, I'll put on like, you know, certain Tupac albums or something like that. So like, okay, so sometimes you put the song on, like the song happens like when you're like, I'm going to do a painting. I'm listening to the song. Oh, this is the song for this piece I'm about to do. Is yeah, that- like it might even be like when I'm in my car later. Uh, if like, I just usually have like Spotify on just shuffle. So it'll just throw random songs at me. And then if I hear a certain one and if it, if I'm thinking about like, you know, this song reminds me of, you know, this particular scene or setting or whatever. Oh, that'd be a cool painting. Then when I go home, I'll pretty much just put that song on repeat and just listen to it over and over again until, uh, the painting's done pretty much. That's fascinating. Is, uh, I mean, this is a dumb question because I don't think anyone <laughs> ever knew that you did that, but I was like, I wonder if anybody ever looked at a piece and like, that reminds me of this song. <laughs> Probably not, huh? I haven't heard it, but one thing I also sometimes do is like, so whenever I promote it on like Instagram or something, I'll like, if I, a new work, I'll also like, uh, I'll throw it on a story and I'll put the song on that inspired oh. it. Do you indicate that or you just no, do it? I just do it. Okay, well, now everyone knows. So, because <laughs> so, everyone listens. In the now whole world. it's official. Yeah, that's cool, though. I like that's fascinating because I, I mean, for me, I can't even draw my name. <laughs> like, I, I don't want to even because I'm like, I don't want to look at it afterwards. Right. It's, so, it's like, it's fascinating how, you know, it makes sense, though. I mean, and then it makes sense you ended up at Art Co. Like, it's a very symbiotic. Have you ever done that thing where you paint with like a live band or that's not really your vibe? I've done live painting at Art Co. Oh, you have? Okay. Yeah. They, uh, they called me to do, uh, there was some charity gig that they had there with like something to do with, uh, with animals. I can't remember what it was like mm. some uh, dog tag thing or something like GPS kind of doubt. Do- oh, tag or right. Like yeah. Yeah. I figuratively remember that. Yeah. And so I was doing like live, live painting there and I did some like robot dog thing. And you know. <laughs> of course, yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Um, I mean, like, do you have like big plans in your future? Like, do you have some goals like related to this to like get to next levels or, uh, I think I'd like to expand, Band, because like right now I'm pretty much like primarily in Deep Ellum. Like I'd like to eventually uh, try to expand if it's if not just like across you know the Metroplex, maybe even like reach out to um, galleries in other states or something like that and uh-huh. see if anything can, anything can be done there. Um, 
even though it's going to take me a, a billion years, I will at some point finish my goddamn graphic novel. <laughs> <laughs> like how how far into it are you? I mean, what do you think? I guess how much I mean, long it would take to get done? It's like I said, it's it's already written. So uh, the whole thing's written. All the storyboarding is done. Uh, the first issue is actually already on uh, like uh, you know Kindle edition Amazon. Uh, so it's it's already out there. Oh, I've, okay. I think I've sold about you know four copies or something because I haven't really marketed it at all. Because, right. Like, I thought at the time that I was going to be like knocking it out a lot quicker. And then when I realized I like I only have literally the one issue out and it's been how how long now right. since so like I haven't done anything to market it. Um, so now I'm kind of like even debating like if I just want to finish the entire thing and then just throw it out there like all at once or because like right now it's it's going to be broken up into like eight separate issues and then eventually when it's done it'll be you know one cohesive uh, graphic novel but that feels like a lot less pressure to do it that way yeah just, you know. <laughs> I think what would motivate me to finish that is like so it was kind of at the you know the 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 peak of uh, COVID whenever I was working on it so I um I did reach out to a few publishers um like you know big ones like Dark Horse Image Comics stuff like that um and just kind of, you know, did the uh, the submission and all that kind of stuff. Uh, never heard back from any of them. Mm. But I guess that's better than getting rejected, right? It just, I mean, like, I guess, yeah, because yeah. they maybe they didn't even see it. Yeah, because I, I, like, in hindsight, looking back at it, it's like, oh, yeah, I mean, shit, it was COVID. Like, no one's no one's going to be doing, like, oh, right, hiring, yeah. like, new artists and all this stuff. So I'll, yeah. I'll probably at some point start that up again. I think that would motivate me to actually pick it back up. Like if a publisher was interested in it, sure. it's like, okay, now I actually have a reason to pick this back up again. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I, I mean, I don't know why I don't ask these questions more about like the artist drive because you have a job, you have a family. Um, and like, yet this is, seems like your passion and, yeah. and then some, so I mean like what, what is it? I'd say it's, it's definitely more like therapeutic or cathartic to paint than it is to work on like the graphic novel because it, it, it feels like that's actually work yeah but with painting it's like just the process alone like again like i can just throw music on and just paint for hours and it's just like the the actual process of painting is what i enjoy doing sure sure does your son like to paint with you yet he hasn't painted with me yet but he's definitely artistic and he also has the uh <laughs> so like we'll have him like on his tablet with like youtube kids or something and he does the same thing as me where he'll find a song he likes and he listens to it on repeat over and over and over and over. Huh. So, uh, Did he pick that up from me or that's he's just doing it? He just it? does it. Wow. So, Interesting. <laughs> so I guess it's in the genes. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he's he's definitely like artistic uh, with what he does. Like uh, whenever we do like, you know, arts and craft projects or stuff like that. Like, um, So at, once he gets older, I'll definitely, if he's if he's interested in it, I'll, I'll set him up and, uh, you know, get him painting and kind of cool. teach him some stuff. Cool. He likes, he likes music. Uh, so I also, I'm a drummer as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, did you been in bands then? I used to jam a lot more with my brother. Um, no, sorry. Yeah, I used to jam a lot more with my brother, but never really kind of. It was more just like you know, jamming at home kind of stuff. Like never really sure. did a whole lot with it. But we still play. Like I mean, I've been playing drums since I was like nine years old. Right. Um, and so now I just have like a, a Roland electric kit, so I can play it. You know, three a.m. if I want to. Oh, those are fun. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, he'll he'll as soon as he discovers that you're gonna. Oh, he's he's always begging me to play it. Yeah, yeah. I bet just banging on stuff. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. <laughs> um, okay, well, I mean, so basically, there's not anything immediately coming up, but you got all this stuff that's just going to be happening as life goes on. Yeah, I mean, I have like a backlog right now because I have been painting with kind of nowhere to put it, but I do believe uh, that I will be. I'll need to get back in touch with Art Coke. I believe I'll be curating another show uh, in 24 at some point. Cool. Uh, so hopefully that'll awesome. Uh, as far as I know, that's the next thing. I, uh, I mean, I, I usually do like the holiday shows at Kettle uh-huh. as well. So that might be something that I do at the end of the year if, if there's, uh, you know, if there's space for me. Um, other than that, it'll probably be next year that I'll, I'll throw some stuff on a wall. Gotcha. Hey, well, Chase, thanks for coming over and chatting with us and letting us get to know you a little bit better. No problem. Thanks for having me. I'd like to thank Chase Fleischman for being my guest today. You can check his stuff out in the links. Theme song is Salim Narala with Unstoppable. We love that guy. You can listen to the Dallas Famous Podcast every week on Deep Elm Radio, Sundays and Tuesdays at 1 p.m., and then again on all the podcast places. Just wanted to say, if you're a DFW-based business and you want to do some sort of sponsorship, we're looking for you. So reach out and let's talk. Thanks again. We'll see you next week.